Hi, this is Dr. Tim Green, and I'm here with Dr. Loretta Donovan and Dr. Malia Hoffman. Together, we direct the master's degree in education with a concentration in educational technology. We prefer to be called by our first names. However, if you are more comfortable with using Dr. Green, Dr. Donovan, or Dr. Hoffman, this works for us as well. What you're about to listen to or read is your official orientation and overview of the program. We are extremely proud of our program. In response to changing technology, changing policies, and changing student populations, this program has evolved over the last eight years. We work hard to maintain currency and are very proud to say that we are the first and currently only technology master's degree program that has earned the ISTE Coach or ISTE C seal of alignment. To earn this status, our program underwent a rigorous review process in which ISTE reviewers became unofficial students in our program for a semester and reviewed our course readings, activities, and assignments for all courses. You will see that we list ISTC standards and indicators on our syllabi and make course assignments. Your culminating project in this course will be to develop a project and portfolio that shows how you have met these standards. This will be useful for you if you wish to transition into a technology leadership position, but also a great way to show all your accomplishments. We are going to first start with looking at an overview of the next 16 months. Then we will look at individual courses and talk about what you can expect in each of these courses. We close with something that you need to do for the first day of class, and that is creating a study plan. As we discuss the program in general, we're referring to the 16 month program. So here's an overview or kind of a global look at the next 16 months. The different blocks are different semesters. You have four semesters. The fall and spring semesters are the same. You have three classes, but you'll notice that one goes for the entire semester, 16 weeks, and then you have two that are for eight weeks each. The summer is a shortened semester that is intensive in that you complete two courses. Each of these is only five weeks, and it is somewhat intensive as you're completing 15 weeks of work in just five weeks. The first class will be finished by July 4th and the other big one begins right afterwards and ends the first week of August. These courses allow you to come to class just a few hours a week, hopefully giving you time for vacation and lots of R&R. You'll have a few weeks in August with no classes at all before the fall semester starts. Then you have your final semester in which you take two classes for the entire 16 weeks. There are three core courses in the master's program that you will take. These are 511, 529, and 536. 511 is all about educational research. It is a foundational course specifically designed to help you understand what is research and really what is educational research. You will look at and explore different research paradigms such as qualitative research, quantitative research, and mixed methods research. You will do activities such as critiquing literature, and writing a literature review. A literature review is extremely important. It is a skill that you will use throughout the program. Again, this course is all about understanding educational research. 529 is on learning theory. You'll learn about different learning theories and how to apply them. You and a partner will create your own action research project in which you examine the role of technology in student learning. You look at learning from a perspective of diversity. You look at ways you can help all learners learn. And the main thing with this class is that we really want you to leave the class with a sense of how you can document all of the teacher decisions that you make throughout the year. The last core course is curriculum theory and development. You'll look at curriculum, not just from the micro level of your classroom, but more from a macro level. How is the curriculum you would use in your classroom or district created. You'll explore who creates curriculum and what theories and processes go along with creating curriculum. You will also have the opportunity to critique curriculum, looking at its strengths and weaknesses. You will have the opportunity to develop your own curriculum. This is the major project in this class. You will not actually implement this curriculum, but you will go through the process of developing the curriculum. By the time you are done with the course, you will have a clear understanding of the theories and the decisions that go into making curriculum that is used in the classroom. Et al. 515 is about technology and problem solving in schools. In this course, the whole goal is for you to start thinking outside of the box for how you can use technology and promote problem solving and critical thinking in the classroom. This is one class that is always evolving. 
More recently, the context for this class has shifted to be about STEAM. This is becoming incredibly important, especially with the adoption of Common Core. In this class, you will try your hand at animation, explore universal design for learning, and you'll have your students create videos to engage in an hour of code. The research paper for this class is an annotated bibliography completed individually. The EdTech courses all build upon each other. We encourage you to do what we call working smart. In other words, making sure that you use what you learn in one class to help you with the other classes. This does not mean double dipping assignments, but it means that you have a focus and you build on your own expertise. In each course, you complete a literature review. Think about something you're interested in and for each lit review, look more deeply at a different aspect of that content. You will find that each of the EdTech courses is a balance of theory and application in the classroom. So you'll be reading textbooks, reading websites, reading articles that we provide and looking at the theory and then you will go and apply that in the classroom. If you don't have a classroom, we encourage you to pair up with people who do have a classroom. Our goal with all of these courses is for the projects and assignments to be meaningful to you. So, right now, before we even start the program, if there are assignments that you already feel you are proficient at and you would like to suggest an alternative assignment, we are always open to that. One of the first courses that you will start taking in the first semester is Ed L523 and it is about distance education issues and trends. We look at it in a larger context because what happens in a larger context often affects K-12 schools. We'll learn about what is happening in distance education. You will learn about what distance education actually means. And you will look at some of the research on distance education. Some of the activities that you will do include participating in a distance education experience with students, looking at distance education resources, and as a group, you will create your first research paper. Well, it really is a presentation like a conference presentation, but you will examine research on a distance education issue or trend, and you will present that to the entire class. By the time you are done with the class, you should have a solid understanding of what distance education is and isn't, and an understanding of how distance education is changing the way we view teaching and learning. Ed L515 is about technology and problem solving in schools. In this course, the whole goal is for you to start thinking outside of the box for how you can use technology and promote problem solving and critical thinking in the classroom. This is one class that is always evolving. More recently, the context for this class has shifted to be about STEAM. This is becoming incredibly important, especially with the adoption of Common Core. In this class, you will try your hand at animation, explore universal design for learning, and you'll have your students create videos to engage in an hour of code. The research paper for this class is an annotated bibliography completed individually. The next semester you take two ed tech classes. They are 518A and B. These two classes build on each other as you can see from their titles. Issues of Instructional Design of Classroom Software and Multimedia Development and Instruction in the Classroom. The first eight weeks in 518A, we look at what instructional design is and how instructional design helps you and others create classroom software. We also look at what elements make up effective classroom software, and we learn processes for critiquing different types of educational software from those that are available on DVDs all the way to apps and web-based software. We look at a variety of software. You really should come away from the class with an understanding of the instructional design process and how it can be used to design classroom software and other types of multimedia. You go through the process of designing and creating a piece of multimedia in 518B. You will test this software out with your students. You go through the process that professionals who create software go through. You won't create something that's so difficult to do that you will, you will be able to sell it but you will at least understand the process that goes into creating software. For these two courses, you will create a page in a, week, in a wiki that is related to instructional design. This is your research project for these two courses. NL522 is about web design for instruction in schools. In the same way where with 518A and B, you looked at the design of multimedia, in this one, we look at how websites are designed and developed to promote effective learning. 
You'll evaluate websites, participate in a MOOC, and begin to create your own website that will be used for your ISTE coach portfolio. Of course, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with Web 2.0, and we will get you using social media, Twitter and Pinterest in particular. You will have an individual literature review that you complete for this course. The final EdTech course is EdL 590, Technology Professional Development in Schools. In this course, you are putting everything together that you have learned and explored during the program. So the goal of this class is that when you finish this, you will feel like you have become a technology leader in your school or your district. You will plan, design, implement, and evaluate professional development for your colleagues. You will create an online professional development module, and you will do some technology peer mentoring. You will also do a grant or conference presentation proposal, so you can get feedback on that. And as I said, when you leave this class, you have positioned yourself as a technology leader. So this class is one where we can say you're going to push you out of the nest. During the same semester that you take the class that Malia just discussed, you are also taking EDEL 594, which is your culminating project class. Some master's programs have you take comprehensive exams. Others have you write a thesis, and some have you put together a project. We do something slightly different than all three. We have you create a digital portfolio. The digital portfolio represents ways in which you are able to demonstrate competence in the ISTE coach standards indicators. You most likely will not show competence in all of the indicators for these standards by the end of the program, but you will be amazed at how many of them you are able to show competence with. Your digital portfolio will include a variety of artifacts, such as assignments you have completed in the program or outside activities or projects that you have done in your work. A major artifact you will include in your digital portfolio is a coach project. This coach project can take many different forms, but what it will help you do is demonstrate competence in the ISTE coach standards. This project gives you the opportunity to step into the role of a technology leader, that is, a coach. When you are done with the final semester, you will have a professional portfolio and you will have created and carried out a major coach project that you can share with others that demonstrate your abilities as an educator who is capable of being a technology leader and coach. Now I'm going to take a few minutes here to talk about the study plan. The first thing I want to pass along is that the form is created in Microsoft Word. Please use Word to fill this out. This will ensure that the document is formatted according to university requirements. The bottom part of the study plan is already filled out and basically lists the course that we talked about and what semesters you will be taking them in. The part that you need to fill out using your word processor is the top part. Pause and locate this form so you can fill it out as we go through. So your name. Use the name that the university has as your official name. The campus-wide ID, today's date, the address that everything is mailed to, your home phone, and work phone. If you don't have a home phone, just put in a cell phone, it doesn't matter. The email address, use an email address you can check as this is how the department and the university will contact you once you are no longer a student. The next section where there is one, two, three, four, you will only need to fill out parts one and two. You either earned a BA, a BS, or other degree. Make sure you list the institution. If you went to Cal State Fullerton, you can just put CSUF, but if you went somewhere else, please spell out the whole institution and include the month and year you graduated. For example, if you graduated May 2005, put 05-05, and don't forget to put in your undergraduate major. For item two, if you have a teaching credential, you will fill out the top line. You all have a basic teaching credential, so check the first box and then it's either preliminary or clear. If you haven't got a teaching credential, you will fill out anything on the top row and just check the equivalent experience box. That is how you fill out the study plan. What we'd like you to do is save it as your surname underscore study plan and as a document. For example, I would save as Hoffman underscore study plan dot DOC. And then if you can send it back to the department, at all grad programs at fullerton.edu before the end of the week. Please CC Malia on this email. If you have questions, email Malia, malia.csuf at gmail.com. 
as many of you experienced with the admissions process, the study plan is processed by the university, and it can take several months to actually get it all filled in. If you haven't heard anything by the end of this semester, then you need to contact us. Usually you should have got an official study plan by the end of the semester. On behalf of the three of us and all your instructors in the EdTech program, we look forward to working with you and getting to know you.